Serene Jones, thank you for being here. First, let's talk about the news of Beth Moore's stunning departure from the Southern Baptist Convention. How did you respond to the news? Well, I was not surprised by it. The Southern Baptist Convention uh, has a long history of losing some of its best women uh, because it will not permit them to hold uh, space in the pulpit, the most treasured position in the church. So it's not surprising. Um, and I know she will go on to continue to speak and have a long career and her voice needs to be heard. Beth Moore is a big presence within the Southern Baptist Convention. Do, do you think they're gonna learn some valuable lessons through this? Um, you would hope so, but there's many other Beth Moores out there who over the last 20 years who have left and it has not shifted, but we can only hope and pray that it does begin to shift the conversation because she is such a major voice in the Southern Baptist Convention. What's the church's role in protecting survivors of sexual abuse and stopping it before it happens? Well, the role of the church in uh, protecting and stopping it before it happens uh, should be huge. Um, in fact, we should be looking in churches um, at the theology that's preached, at the scriptures that are used, at all aspects of theology that would either um, promote um, or justify uh, the power of a minister or the leader to such an extent that they feel empowered to um, take advantage of and abuse uh, members of the congregation. Um, but we also need to address the issue of silence. Um, silence is not okay, that knowledge of misconduct needs to be immediately called out and you are held responsible for the knowledge you have. This is not something that's all right to be quiet about. I agree with you. I mean, I think silence is a, a big issue in the church today, especially when it comes to sexual abuse. Have you seen the culture change any since the Me Too and the Silence is Not Spiritual and the Church Too movements of just a couple of years ago? Um, yes, I've seen um, a lot of movement. Um, it is now increasingly a topic that people are willing to speak about. Uh, I've particularly seen movement in the evangelical world where evangelical pastors, which previously um, had sort of complete immunity around these issues, are now being challenged by their churches, by their congregations, uh, when uh, they uh, um, do sexual abuse or uh, overstep the boundaries of their position. Um, in any way that's inappropriate with parishioners and they're being held accountable. So yes, I, I think it's tremendous. How can the church be more active? You know, we talk about just acknowledging and uh, not being silent, but how can we actively protect vulnerable, vulnerable people within our communities, within our society? Well, I know that very many denominations in the United States um, have uh, mandatory training um, for all clergy and all leaders around sexual misconduct um, and sexual abuse. I know that our seminary and many seminaries in the United States uh, require um, misconduct and abuse training before people can graduate with their Masters of Divinity and become ministers. It needs to get incorporated into our curriculum at every level so um, that there's knowledge about what happens and there's knowledge about how to address it. And finally, last question, what are your thoughts about the sexual abuse allegations that have come forth about Ravi Zacharias? Oh, they're just horrifying, uh, very disturbing. Um, I'm sad to say, though, that every time I hear these, I'm, I'm horrified and disturbed, and yet it's some part of me, I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, that is very often in our culture, the biggest personalities and the people with the most power and the most unquestioned power. Um, that use that power to take advantage of others and use their power uh, to uh, abuse and uh, deeply damage and harm others. Talk to me about the importance of women in the church and the voice of women in the church and why we need to be reminded of that. Well, basically the church is women. If you look globally, 80% mm -hmm. of the people who make up the churches, Christian churches in the world are women. Uh, they run the churches, they clean the churches, they do the cooking in the churches, they run the offices in the churches, um, they are the people who are filling the pews, they're at the Bible studies, and the fact that this mass number of voices and devoted lives are ignored when it comes to leadership is a devastating failure of faith at its very core. Um, women should be stepping up to lead, and stepping up to lead with the full force of the Lord behind their voice. Yeah and the support of the church behind them as well.